Hi, everyone. It's Sarlene from Beacons of Balance. I'm here at my wonderful co-host, Joanne. Hi, Hi, everyone. And we have a very special guest today. Welcome, Dr. Spearson. He'll give us a lot to think about, an amazing phenomenon called crop circles that have been on this planet for as far back as 1678. Wow. I wonder what we looked like. Yeah, I wonder what we looked like then. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) That that we know of, right, like you said, even before. So, Joanne, tell us about Dr. Wonderful. Wow, I'm so excited to have Steve here with us. This is a real privilege. Um, I've known Steve for at least 20 years. I mean, I've You've spoken all over the United States at so many conferences. Um, you were a guest speaker at my conference, Lightworkers Conference, I don't know how many times. And Steve, has, he's not only is he an author of several books, In God's Grace uh, and Daughter of the Frost, um, and I think you're writing a book now, but uh, Steve can cover any topic from NDEs, mythology, Atlantis, Lemuria, prophecy, Bible codes, you name it. But today... I am so pumped because we are going to hear about crop circles, Arlene. I know. And I can't wait. He was a specialist in this area. And I this know there's a, one crop yeah. circle that I want to for sure cover. It's my favorite. So so, so regarding crop circles, there, there's been so much controversy about this, like who or how these intricate, in, in, I can't even say the word, designs <laughs> have been carved so meticulously in wheat fields globally. Many have come forward claiming to uh, make these by bending the wheat over with boards or some type of instrument. Uh, but to make such detailed designs overnight seems in- impossible. I mean, I'm sure there's some that have played around with that, right, Steve? But what's what's your theory on this for us? Well, crop circles, uh, the, the indigenous have, rec- have recognized them for thousands of years. We have a newspaper article going back to 1678 that uh, supports the crop circles. Um, uh, Certainly at least 20% of the designs are are hoaxes or ads or people just joking around. Um, Possibly up to 80% might be genuine. One of the uh, when we get into the PowerPoint, I can show some some of the signs. Uh, the key sign this, is that if you take any crop circles of, of, appear in wheat fields, but any kind of any kind of field or grass, trees, sometimes desert floor, um, uh, but if you take any kind of stalked plant, you try to bend it ninety degree. Anything corn, wheat, grass, you can't, you will, you will snap it. Right. But crop circles are bent 90 degrees and I have samples, um, uh, to show and they're not damaged. So, so to me, um, we seem to be getting communication from, from a highly advanced civilization and, and they're communicating visibly to the public in a way that an advanced civilization would do, that they won't even damage one stock of wheat. The wheat right. continues to grow and is totally healthy. Actually, they're they're uh, enriched. Um, they grow healthier and faster. So that's pretty uh, amazing. So and and, yeah. and there's other indicators, but we probably can't get into uh, everything. But uh, the plant is not damaged, and, and the hoaxers, if they're using two by fours. And rope, they're they're damaging the plants. They're they are they are damaging. They're trespassing and damaging farmers' fields. But uh, uh, wow. the genuine ones, uh, um, the, the plant is not damaged. So Steve, well, you just, know, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Arlene. Go ahead. So okay, so overnight, someone's field, a crop circle appears. All right, and they see it. Say, so they take pictures, and then does it go back to its normal form? Are you saying that's why it's not damaged? So it'll, so if it's down, it'll pop back up. Um, no, they don't. They don't pop back up. They, they actually all plants are phototactic. Um, so if you would move a plant in a direction, the plant will start growing back to the sun. Crop circle plants don't do that. They defy science and 
and our understanding of biology and, and plant, they continue growing in the direction that they've been bent, which divide, right. but they, they go, the farmers can't use the crop because it's bent over and their equipment will pick it up. But uh, some people will go out and they'll ask the farmer for permission to harvest that when it's ready. Um, so, so no, it, it doesn't pop back up. It, it stays down. That's pretty cool. I know, Steve, and I talked to, uh, at length with you about this. This is one of my favorite crop circles of all times, probably because I'm an artist and I love Leonardo but, the, yeah. but the Vitruvian. But yeah, the, the human butterfly. So yeah. it's a symbol of, of, um, uh, uh, of transformation. And right. if you count, there are exactly... 77 circles in that. And that's, oh. this is a third of a mile across. And again, it appeared uh, very quickly. Some some crop circles, less than 1%, are actually observed when they go down. And they go down without any people around, no equipment around, um, in in a matter of a couple minutes. Do you know so, that? You've seen orbs, haven't and, they? And I, I, if, if we can get to, when we get to the PowerPoint, uh, Joanne, I have the Vitruvian man, and it, and it it resembles that butter human butterfly almost right. identically. Wow! I mean, it's the same proportions, the same the same. Uh, uh, yeah. So so Da Vinci had his Vitruvian Vitruvian man, and and so they know our art and our history. You know, they 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 did that intentionally. Did you know that Vitruvia was actually an architect in the first century BC? Okay, okay. No, I didn't. He predates Da Vinci. So That's yeah, cool. so so I'm yeah, right. I, think, I think he was kind of portrayed as like the ideal human human form, and and uh, so. And we're all about the messages, right, Arlene? Because of what our podcast is about. Yeah, and of course, I love the design, being an artist. So, yeah. So. Um. So would you like to see if we can connect up to the PowerPoint? <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I think we're getting uh, these crop circles are from a benevolent source. I think it's a privilege. Uh, and that, and they seem to be intervening in a way that is going to assist us in our our spiritual uh, development. So but it's a privilege. The indigenous have treated these as sacred for thousands of years. Um, so we're just going to take a look. I'm going to go through some of this. Here's, here's an angel for you, Joanne. Um, if somebody made that with, uh, two by fours and rope, more power to them. Yeah, that, that's no more way. unbelievable yeah. than, than E.T. doing this. Right. And uh, here, here's, here's that wood cut we were talking about. This is from 1678 Woodshire. Um, it shows the devil mowing the crop circle. But if you read the article, it says it wasn't, it doesn't say it was cut down. You say it was bent over like crop circles we see today. But back in that day, who did, who did we, who did we have the highest, who had the highest power? The church. If the church could not explain something, the devil did it. Sure. So the newspaper had to show the devil mowing down, even though the article didn't support that. So we still have the kind of the same thing today. So here's what we were talking about. Here is here is a well, stalk, uh, and it's bent 90 degrees, but as you can see, it's not snapped. It's uh it's bent without damage. So we have, our scientists have no technology to do that. We can't do that. This is an unknown energy source. Uh, plus, plus it also seems to, there's cross sections of the, of the uh, plant. Um, it crystallizes the, uh, the, the plant, the, the stalk. The top one is the normal, the bottom one is the uh, so it can occur in trees, grass, wheat, plants. Uh, there's there's trees, 
I'm going to, there's ice, there's ice. This, I, I probably shouldn't even get into this. We at one time thought this was uh, a geoglyph that appeared um, in the desert floor. Um, but it was, this, this goes back thousands of years. This is Australia. Um, and it's got a long story, but, uh, uh this is one that they, they said that, oh, construction workers, cause it's, it's 1.4 miles from the foot to the end. Wow. And they, and they, and they said, oh no, a bulldozer crew was hired by the, you know, went out and they, and they put that. Well, well, the tourist industry had seen a fainter version of this image, and they were getting afraid that um, that image would disappear. So they tried working with the government to get the Aborigines to give them permission to enhance it, and the Aborigines wouldn't. So then they, they just went over and they just hired bulldozers to to desecrate and destroy this ancient uh, um, geoglyph and the so, so it was destroyed now you can see it from a satellite but before you you, you couldn't see it you but know, it looks like the it looks like the Egyptian image for Thor uh, the head is like I mean, thought thought oh that's his headdress I think uh, um, uh, it's a it's a he's he's got a throwing stick um, it's this is Aboriginal Okay, because it looks like, oh, but, yeah. but it, it it was not a crop circle. Here it is from a farther distance, but uh, so but um, we'll get into uh, some of the complexity. This is a, a a basket weave. the The wheat is actually interwoven. So one of the things I wanted to mention was just the evolution of this. And they were originally called crop circles prior to the 19, 1980s and earlier because that's what they were. They were circles and dots, just like what you see here. But uh, after about 1991, they started getting more complicated. Um, and so today they're, real, they're not circles, they're glyphs. They're very complex. Uh, back in the 80s and before, um, we were having 500 to 700 crop circles appear um, mostly in southern England, within about 25 miles of Stonehenge, and and England is southern southern England is still where most of them come in, uh, but since they're more complicated, there's not as many. But Dave, uh, have there been any recent ones? Yeah, yeah, um, you know, and, and I, I I I was going to put those in at the end, but uh, yeah, there was. There's been about three or four that I've noted noted this year. Okay. Um, so here's here's one that ap appeared in the uh, Utah Desert floor. It is an exact um, representation of the Sri Yantra Mandala. Wow. That's uh, the basis of of many Hindu temples. Uh, it's it's carved three inches deep, but there's no debris. Wow. There's no debris. That's really interesting. It was. It's a third of a mile. It's 13 miles of of this design that appeared overnight in in the desert. Um, National Guard jets would fly over it daily. They said no one one day it wasn't there. The next day it was there. Wow. But it's it's the basis of of many Hindu temples. So. Around 1991, this is one of this is this was the first complex crop circle. These signs are are uh, relative. In, these are significant to indigenous. Um, so in '91, we start getting into one of the complex poems that that started showing up as fractals. But what this is one of the things with uh, crop circles is that you're going to have to expand your knowledge of science, math, fractals, sacred geometry, um, and our own history. So so in 91, they, um, we were starting to get into fractals. So fract I, uh, Arlene, are you familiar with fractals? No. Is, no, I, okay. Well, so I, with the I, baby course on the fractal is just a diminishing, repeating 
pattern. There's, there it is. There's it in its simplest form. Okay. It's, it's, it's an exploration into infinity or infinitesimal, but it's, it's uh, all your, in all of our, our nature. Uh, uh, snowflake is a perfect example. It's just a pattern that continues to go on and on and on. And here you see other examples of fractals in nature. And up until 1991, uh, this is called the Mandelbrot fractal. He was uh, he was the mathematician who came up with this. And uh, up until that time, fractals had only ever been created on computer. Well, Science Magazine in in England started noticing that crop circles were getting more more complicated. And and at the end of one article, they said, "Well, what's next?" A Mandelbrot, and this is what they're referring to. One year later, after that article came out, you had this in a in a field, and it's a pretty good representation of the of Mandelbrot fractal. So, so there, Arlene, you're not familiar with fractals. Most people are not, but um, there we have them. Uh, s- snowflakes patterning, yeah, snowflakes. Yeah. And if, if I wow. skim over something that you want to spend more time on, here is a, a Julia set fractal, um, repeating diminishing pattern. Is this occurred right across from Stonehenge in the middle of the day on a Saturday? I remember that. Pardon? that is, I remember when that made the news when that came out. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. At four o'clock, jets had flown over. There was nothing in the field at a little after five. This was there. A cab driver saw that go down, and it it went down in a few minutes. Wow! So this is right across from a world a world archaeological site. Nobody nobody saw nobody saw anything early in the day, and and then it was there in well, the Steve, middle of the day. Steve, are you familiar with semantics? Which is the Bible. say that again? Semantics. Semantics? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so this is yeah. similar to that with the plate vibrating. You put sand and it makes a for it just makes a formation from the vibration. So do right, you, right, right. So Semantic. You, yes. Wherever these are coming from, it's vibratory. Well, we're all vibrating. So, um, well, um, I, I do have. Um, I don't know if we'll get time to get to it, but I do have a video clip from Thrive Magazine. It shows that the. There's an energy pattern in all of these crop circles, and it's it's not just two dimensional on the ground; it's three dimensional. It oh. can be measured above and below the surface. So each of these has a sacred geometric pattern in it, and that goes above and and below. So um, here's a triple Julia set. I you know you know if people go through this, and all you say is that the crop circles are beautiful. To me, that's enough. Um, but there's here's a, a six-fold similar one. Oh, dragonfly. Dragonfly, yep. Yeah. This is not a crap circle. This is this is Canada, but you can see that you can see a uh, looks like a deliberate head of an indigenous person. Um, here, here's one example. Here's a uh, our solar system. All right, and. There's been other 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 crop circles similar, and in one of this solar system crop circles, it referred to two possible dates in the past 100 years. One date was the date that the Wright brothers flew their first plane. The second date was the day we set foot on the moon. Interesting. So they're teaching us about our own history and the and the alignment of the planet and we don't even know so so they're making connections that we're failing to make so again i said that you know we get into mathematics this is a crop circle that shows pi out to 10 10 decimal places so so they're speaking the language of math this is they go this is a crop circle uh, representing Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem includes all of the diatonic ratios in music. So they're talking about math and pi, 
they're talking about music and Pythagoras. This is uh, this is a representation for what called Euler's equation. In the movie Hidden Figures, they referred to this. This is the this was the equation that they they needed to compute when you convert from elliptical orbital pattern to a reentry pattern, which is I. Uh, hyperbola. Um, I, uh, um, so this was the equation that they were looking for, um, and it's called an investigation into deep mathematical beauty. I, I, I put this slide up in one show, and there was a math student, and he jumped out of his seat. He said, "Nobody knows about this unless you're a mathematician." So he got excited. But wow! Here's look at that magnetic. Magnetic patterns. So are these up. progressively getting more complicated, more intricate? Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Because um, we're reading it, frequency, right? Or, yeah, oh, yeah, well, the, 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 the frequency. There's genetic patterns. DNA. Cellular stuff. I'm going to skip through. There's 28 figures in there. So that's. I'm going to skip through this there, but it, it relates to oh, yeah, some at, of these look. are referring to the sun effect on our geomagnetic pattern of the earth. And here's, here's possibly one of these, another, another one. Look at that. I mean, just, just beautiful, but this is uh, often incorporated into, into jewelry. This is one of the, uh, really popular crop circle design like yeah, birds. this one too it almost looks like birds birds, right? birds and angels birds or or cellular mitosis no well okay <laughs> but here crop circles <laughs> often occur right adjacent to sacred sites this is Selberry hill um, um this is uh this is a uh, first and second stage there was a third stage of this crop circle it's right 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 by uh, White Horse, and there's several White Horses in yeah. England. Um, there, Silbury Hill. There is Silbury Hill in ancient, and it's a magnet. It's it's composed of uh, um, uh, different types of material, uh, and once you put alternate layers. You're, you've created a battery, and, and some people have measured the effect and now it changes. This is a, a, a spider web, and this occurred right outside of Avery, England. Well, Avery is, has the world's largest Stonehenge. It's, it's a small town encircled by uh, uh, Stonehenges all around. Well, it just so happens that the, uh, the spider web is exactly laying on a ley line that goes through the exact center of the village, um, and and I'm I'm fairly familiar with ley lines, but until this, I didn't realize they said that he was he was laying on a feminine ley line, which I, I hadn't understood. Well, and if you understand the symbology of this, um, spider web to indigenous refers to the grandmother spider. And that the web of life, and we're we're kind of stepping into quantum physics here. That all life is interconnected. Wow. So it's no it's no accident that this is on a feminine ley line. And how many people would know that? Who knows that? Yeah. Who would create that crop, crop circle and, and put all that together? You know, it's not just about boards and rope, but. Uh, um, you know, all, that's what I was going to say. I, the ley lines have got to be connected to these because yeah, those yeah. sacred sites were built. They they knew how to find those ley lines. Yep, they 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 knew how to sense them. So this is no accident. And, and, and if somebody created that and knew all that, well, then I'm even more impressed because I know no humans that's that could create that and would know that. Right. So... So if there's somebody who wants to say, oh, they're two, uh, two retired teachers did that. No, 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 they did. 
but where I'm not going to get into, I'm going to briefly scan through, but we're, they're, they're connected to sacred geometry. And this isn't that I'm not the person to go into this, but this should all look very familiar. And all of this sacred geometry is incorporated into the crop circle. Wow. So it's very interesting. The platonic solids, the sacred geometry, the torus. On the tube torus. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The vesica Pisces. Wow. You can see the sacred geometry in here. If I'm going too fast, let me you know. I'm I'm trying to, and, and this is etched. They don't, it's not carved. This is etched onto stone at the Temple of Isis in Egypt. Right. But you have this in a crop circle. So they, there's your star pattern. Here's another star pattern, sacred geometry, fractals, uh, tree of life. Still oh, yeah. have the sacred geometry, spirals. Now we're getting into Fibonacci sequence. So they're teaching us a whole lot, a whole lot. Here's your Fibonacci sequence. One of the simplest sequences, you know, one, two, three, you just keep adding the, the previous two numbers. That's the formula for a spiral. So there, and we see the spirals, fractals in, in all, all of nature. So they're communicating about our uh, our earth. Oh darn! I didn't. I didn't. I bet you I don't have. Uh, I didn't include the one on the can cannabis. Uh, darn. Um, <laughs> and about nineteen ninety seven, they started getting to three D three dimensional representations. There's they're they're representing squares. Here's an octagon in uh, three dimensions. Here's the 12 towers, like you're looking at from the top, wow, that's pretty top cool. down. Yeah. Um, Three-dimensional cube. Another cube. Yeah. Uh, another image. So they, so they get into the three-dimensional. Okay. Well, now we'll get into one of the, one of the major... Um, Back in the in the seventies, we had a unique period of time in NASA. They got into uh, SETI search for extraterrestrial intelligence, um, and that just happened to coincide. Nineteen sixty nine, you the Air Force shut down Project Blue Book. They said there's no evidence for UFOs, so they shut it down. I don't think for a second they shut it down. They just put it up to a higher level of secrecy instead of top secret, it's above that. But then NASA said, well, we're not, we're gonna, we're gonna search. So they started working with Carl Sagan. Um, and, and in the early, early seventies, uh, we had the, um, pioneer spacecraft and they put on, they put on this bronze plaque to, to communicate to uh, uh, an advanced civilization that would encounter this. And it has silhouette of a man and woman. It has a silhouette of the pioneer spacecraft um, on that, that star pattern. Those are the quasars that exist within our, our galaxy. So it pinpoints where Earth is within Milky Way galaxy. It says that we're on the third planet from the sun. Um, and, and then we had the Voyager one and two, they're still out there. They're still communicating oh, with wow. us from the 1970s. They're way beyond our solar system. Um, this is the golden golden record. I, I could talk on that, but uh, there's a lot of information. Yeah, we're, there. we're yeah, there's, there's. So, but in between Pioneer and Voyager, we started sending Carl Sagan designed a data strip. And uh, they, we sent it out from Arecibo, and this is the, uh, Arecibo uh, uh, radio telescope. And uh, so we sent out all these digitized messages to nearby uh, stars, and well, stars up to 15,000 light years. Um, uh, but, but on a scale of our galaxy is 100,000 miles wide. So 15,000 is kind of proximal. Mm -hmm. So this Arecibo 
this is a this was the world's largest uh, radio telescope at that time in the 70s in Puerto Rico. It's uh, some of the guy wires snapped. It's no longer functional now. Has not been repaired. So according to media, according to the military, according to NASA, according to all sources, there was never any response to Carl Sagan's data trip. Sure. So in the but in the year 2000, now we're looking at uh, on the bottom of that image, you see uh, a white tower. That's Chilbot. That's England's largest radio telescope. And there's oh, wow. a crop circle right adjacent to it. That's so pretty. No explanation. This, this by itself doesn't mean anything. But we're, we're going to pick up uh, what it's. This is the data strip that we sent that Carl Sagan designed. It's, it's brilliant, communicates a lot in very little very little um and then this was the uh, the detail of that crop circle so that was so that first crop circle this one appeared in the year 2000 one year later look the to face. the day oh this, look at that and, and and joanne did you this, do a face early who is what, that what, <laughs> what, what, what this this is an art form what do you call it Oh my God! What do I call that? It looks like an alien. It's it's silk screen. That looks oh, it looks like looks like the Turo. Not that it is. A it's a girl. Oh, they have of Christ. It, it's a girl. The, the, the in um, a silk screen kind of process. Oh, that almost like a dash. Which, so it's wow. a face of a girl. Uh, silk screen, an artistic, a human, an on Earth human art process. Oh my God! So. So there, we see the Oh, girl. there you see it now. So we see the girl. Um, does my cursor show up? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if you notice, there's there's Chilbotten. This is one year later to the day. The girl's image is being projected to the radio telescope. It's not from. It's the source is sending this to Chilbotten. Oh wow! So it's coming from off planet. Oh, so do you and think it's so somebody? Is, so you think it's somebody from off planet that is showing their face to, to us? Pardon. So it's from off planet. So it's showing its face to us. To me, to me, that's the way I'm interpreting it. That it's the like image is being projected from a, a foreign source to the Chilbotten radio telescope. Oh, Both wow. of these are the same. What year They're, was that? What year was this that? This is 2001. That... It's exactly a year and to the day after that other image that we saw. So you had one day this showed up, and the next day this showed up. So now let's take a look at that. That's the image. Well, that looks kind of like the Carl Sagan data strip. Right. Matter of fact, if we put them up, it's, it's, it, it uses the exact same Carl Sagan. One is on the right, one is on the left. Most people can guess pretty quick which one is not ours. Yeah. Well, the one on the right was the Carl Sagan one. Yeah, the one, the one on the, the right. left yeah. Yeah. is, is maybe, there. Hey, maybe, maybe it's Carl Sagan. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's communicating, telling us hello. Well, that, that's not what the message says, but I'm going to read from top down very briefly what uh, yeah, what, what it says. What is the message? But, but the very top line says that we use a decimal system for our mathematics. They say the response circle on the left says we do the same. The bottom, the next two lines say uh, life forms on Earth are comprised of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. And they say the same, except they also added in uh, silicon. Um, which is above uh, relative of carbon. Ours below that, ours is all life forms are co are com uh, comprised of double helix DNA. The response circle says we're triple helix DNA. Oh wow! And then the, the Carl Sagan one says his shows a human form, roughly our proportions. Proportions were about five foot nine. Um, we exist on the third planet from the sun. 
the response says, oh, we're four foot, head is kind of large, and they live on their third, fourth, and fifth planet from their sun. It, ours said that we had four or five billion people on the planet. They said they had 19 billion people on their planets. Wow. The bottom one of the Carl Sagan is a diagram of the radio telescope. The bottom one on the response circle is that first crop circle we saw. Only the crop circle was far more detailed. So somebody sent an answer. I, I don't believe for a second that NASA and Chilbotton didn't receive a digitized message. I'm not convinced that that didn't happen. But so I think the 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 communicators go, well, you know, if we put this in the field, everybody in the world can see it. That's amazing. Do you think, is and that the bottom? Well, we have to kind of, um, I hate to do it, but we're, gonna, we're, we're have to kind of. Want, can I just scan through a couple images and, and I, I'm all wrapped up. Okay. But uh, uh, do you. That's the one it? I was looking for right there. Okay, that's oh yeah. Um, this was the alien face, and the the disc there is an ASCII two <laughs> computer language, right. and it says when they decoded it, "Beware the bearers of false gifts and their broken promises." Much pain, but there still is time. Believe there is good out there. We oppose the deception. Conduit closing. So they're saying that they're. Well, They're trying to, to communicate well, with us, and uh, in a benevolent way. Wow! But uh, there's your here, Joanne. Here is your. Uh, this was in Netherlands, and you can you can see the comparison to the Vitruvian man. Right. How closely they. Uh, so that they was... they knew they knew Da Vinci. Um, some of the designs uh, oh, imitate the Nazca lines. So I'm winding down. You guys can go ahead and talk. We'll have to have you back, Steve. I know, there's so many I love, I love to. Yeah. Really? Joanne and I can chat. Oh, my gosh. There's Joanne some... is very interested in the near-death experiences, too. So that, well, that's yeah, we had. I had a whole episode of we Mark. We had several shows on that. If you go to uh, Beacons of Battle, or, you know, our channel, and in March... We, I had one every Wednesday. There was someone talking about near death. Yeah. We covered Atlantis uh, not but, long ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, we've been cranking. You know, I wanted to ask you because the station, the, the, this, this is what we create. It's about balance, about being in balance. So, what do you do for yourself to keep yourself in, in balance? <laughs> in balance. Why? Well, I just, anything, anything, I, anything I can do outside. You know, whether I'm playing pickleball or riding a bike or hiking around and right across the street, there's a vol uh, volcano that's 15 million years extinct. Um, we can walk around it. There's a lake. So anything I do be outside gardening, you know, just working outside. I That's my connection, nature. Yeah, um, that's that's great. So, and um, any, thank any kind of group communication is like this where we can get together and share share our our common common interests yeah right about sharing that knowledge you know so we could raise others up thank you for being here for everybody okay. out there thank Thanks you again, remember Steve. remember to be the beacons of light that you are and shine it out into this world because we need it as right. when we looked at the crop circles they're being shined out there for us and there's yeah. messages i think the whole the bottom line of that is there's messages out there there's miracles at every moment but we we don't see it with our we turn our blind eye to it so we just have to be more open to receive and know we're not the only ones that were one with the whole entire globe and universe and to lift each other up that's what it's all about and the bottom line what right. all of this is about is about love and that's that's the driving force so exactly. again steve thank you for being joanne yes uh, thank you thank you joanne thank do you, you arlene do you need um anything you'd like to to share I'm just, hey, I'm just uh, glad that we could get this together and, and have yeah. someone like Steve on here share his infinite wisdom. Just just, just say a prayer that all goes through. And for everyone, um, please, please subscribe. There's going to be a subscribe button. We'll have Steve's information um, below all of this so you could check out his books and connect and, and, and so forth. And I'm sure we're going to be bringing him back on. We may have to bring him back on if this doesn't go through. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, that'll be wonderful. I'll, I'd be, I'll be glad to, to join anytime. Great. Thank you so much. Right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Awesome. Thank Have you for what you're both doing. Thank, Thank you. you.